Hi there! We've just released 2 version 3.9. If you are new here and wondering what all this is about, Tool3 is an open source application for generating motion graphics. It can be used for animation, live performances and installations. It's slick, easy to use, yet incredibly powerful. In the 10 weeks since the release of version 3.8, the community has added a vast number of new features and improvements. You can download the latest version, of course for free, and read all the details on the website. You can find the link below. In this video, I will walk you through the highlights. So, let's dive right in. Let's start with documentation. More and more people are discovering Tool 3. Although we design everything with usability in mind, many users might never discover some of Tool's powerful features due to lack of documentation. Improving the situation was a key focus of the new release. We extended documentation to operator parameters. And because the help page for most operators is now much more extensive, it's displayed when hovering over the help icon. Clicking that icon will toggle to the help mode. We also cleaned up the design of the parameter window and aligned the parameter order of many ops. To keep things more consistent, we brought an extensive style guide for documentation and operator consistency. A huge shout out to all the contributors working on this effort. The result really shows. Additionally, we started a wiki page called Real-Time Rendering for Artists. It covers many technical questions most artists will encounter when diving into real-time content. You can find a link in the description. If you still have questions, join us on Discord or leave a comment below. We we'll answer all of them and add them to that page. Now, let's look at some of the new features. Exporting videos is now up to 10 times faster. Not only that, but you no longer need to convert the format for rendering. Additionally, we implemented audio export. This means that you can render your audio reactive projects with super high quality and motion blur. To enhance the video rendering experience, we have added an increment version number checkbox. Now you can keep the render window docked and repeatedly hit start render to save out intermediate work steps. GLTF is becoming the de facto file format for exporting 3D file assets. Tool now supports not only loading single meshes, but complete scenes and we automatically load and combine textures into correct channel maps for physically based rendering. Here's an example. We can use the simple browser to create the load GLTF scene operator. We can click the edit scene setup to adjust the different nodes. Here we also see the textures for each material. The documentation mentions the draw scene operator. When we drag this onto the graph and connect it, we can see the scene in all its beauty. The operator also provides some parameters to override the file's roughness and metallic settings to adjust its appearance even further. To combine GLTF objects with Tool's Mesh Effects pipeline, the operator also provides outputs for a mesh and a material. Let's draw instances of our mesh. Connect draw at points to the mesh output and connect a use material to the material. This is just the first set of features. Over the next versions, we will implement more cool GITF features like animations, skinning, blend shapes and camera definitions. You can now use the Ableton Link Sync Operator to connect to any application in your network that sends Ableton Link synchronization. Because Ableton made this protocol available as a free standard, there is now a wide range of applications that support this feature. Besides Ableton Live, there are Tractor, Bitwig, Touch Designer, VVVV and many more. Additionally, a lot of DJ hardware can also support that protocol. This is huge, because Ableton Link not only sends the tempo, i.e. BPM rate, like with MIDI, but also the syncing within bars. And because all timing in Tool 3 is using bars, everything, I mean everything, is now syncing perfectly. Connect an anim value to a blob radius, 
And voila, perfect sync. No more tapping at VGX. Yes! One of Tool's central data types are points. After feedback from the community, we've completely overhauled points to support colors and stretching. We added many operators to set, modify or randomize colors and scaling. Of course, there are infinite ways to combine these with the hundreds of already existing point operators. This opens up the road for even more flexible code generation. Here are three quick examples. In the first one, we generate some radial points, apply some noise and use these points to draw some mesh instances. We can now insert the randomized points operator to add some colors and scaling to our instances. Randomized points is awesome because its random seed can be a float value which results in very nice deterministic animations. In the next example, I'm using sample point colors on a video texture and combine it with draw billboards. This one also has a random face parameter along with a lot of other parameters that might finally make some sense because now we have some documentation. Yeah, well, better later never. In the last example, we combine the result of two line points. For one, we set the start and end colors. For the other, we use the spread point attributes operator to slide a color gradient. Because we didn't adjust the point counts of the repeated lines, we can apply an additional noise offset and use the cool new infinity slider to crank up the amount parameter. When playing around with the operators and their presets, you will find many cool other combinations to set and use point colors. And I really encourage you to post them on our Share Your Stuff thread on Discord. Next up is the new combined bias and gain parameter. It might sound like a toy for math geeks, but you will soon see why we really fell in love with this new control. So what can we actually do with that? Let's have a look at the bias and gain example operator. It shows the bias and gain mapping curve as a yellow line. It works like an adjustment curve in a traditional image manipulation software. Mapping blacks in the lower left corner and whites in the upper right. A straight line has no effect. Changing the curve to an S shape will increase the contrast. The reverse will reduce the contrast, eventually leaving a gray image. The S-shape function is called gain. It concentrates either at the center or at the edges. The alternative shape is called bias. It pushes the values either towards the upper or the lower edges, making an image brighter or darker respectively. The incredible thing about the bias and gain parameter is that it combines both of these shapes. Each of these examples uses the same bias and gain parameter but it controls totally different aspects, from images, to distributions, to easing curves for animations. Bias and gain is a single parameter to rule them all. In fact, this feature is so flexible that it would almost be unusable without a cool new control that we added to the parameter window. You can enable it by opening the parameter settings and enable the Vec2 control. Now you can simultaneously drag both parameters and see a visual representation of the settings through distribution curves and weights. Nice! We've already incorporated bias and gain into remap, perlin noise, randomized points, fractal noise, remap colors, tint, line points, radial points and numerous other operators. Let's take a look at some of the operators we've added. We drastically improved the performance of the NDI input, which now works great with all kinds of input formats, sources and can support up to 4K footage. Advanced Feedback 2 is a great addition to Advanced Feedback. It comes with a wide range of presets and can create very nice looking flute-like effects. Dither is a cool effect that adds a retro look to your design. It's a good example of how we always try to implement effects with the widest range of possibilities using the least amount of controllable parameters. It comes with nice documentation and presets. And obviously, we just had to add bias and gain controls. 
like most image operators, it also features the new list of blend modes. Also nice are the new noise variants Warlay and Chart. We've also updated and cleaned up Fractal Noise. Tint and its bigger brother Remap Colors are tool color adjustment operators that really benefit from the bias and gain. Remap Colors now supports color cycling, which can be great for generating effects. Now, let's look at some of the updates to the particle effects. Let's start with a recap. As shown in the How to Use Particles tutorial, the particle system op is where the magic happens. We add some emit points, add a force, render the output as points, and there we have it, a simple particle system. So let's talk about the changes. We've rethought how lifetime is handled. Its default setting of minus one tells the system to use the maximum lifetime calculated from the number of emitted points and the available buffer length. When writing this particle age to the W attribute, this value is now in the range between 0 and 1. We can use this attribute to color our particles over the lifetime. Or scale instance geometry with this value. The draw mesh at points 2 operator provides many options to do that. I briefly want to mention two new forces we added to the particle system. Both let you control the particles in interesting ways. The first one, texture-based force, accelerates particles along the connected normal map. So, we connect the required normals input. The documentation explains that we need to use normals with the signed normal mode. Let's create an input from a normal map by rendering text into a render target and applying blur. When start playing around with the parameters, or the presets, we quickly find really interesting results. The twist parameter twists the angle of the normal map. If you increase that to 180 degrees, the normal map direction is reversed. The confine depth parameter tries to contain all parameters within a given visible distance from the camera. We can use this setup to highlight the other force I was mentioning, snap to angles force. This force slightly twists the velocity of particles toward the defined angles, which can produce really nice grid structures. Here are some more improvements to tools user interface that were coming with 3.9. You can now rename input parameters from the editor. The beat tapping interaction has been improved with added keyboard shortcuts Z for tapping and X for resyncing to measure start. In focus mode, switching between foreground and background control by clicking on the right edge is now easier. MIDI devices can be rescanned from the settings window without restarting tool. A new Multiply Alpha Blend mode has been added to most image operators, which allows powerful masking. Gradient manipulation now supports undo and redo. Evenly distributing gradient steps before the manipulation now also shows the last step. Looking at the roadmap, we already have big plans for the upcoming versions. We are currently working on a new system on how you can organize your projects and resources. This will take some work, but it's an important step onto the way towards support for Vulkan rendering, so tool can finally be used on Linux and Mac. And for version 11, we will be finally integrating the new magnetic graph system that we shared as a preview last year. It will make working with tool even snappier and live patching even more fun. I want to close by sharing some highlights from our community. You don't need to be C-sharp programming correct to support the project. You can also help us by testing, improving documentation, coming up with good ideas for new features or with spreading the word by sharing this video. 
So, join us on Discord. And thanks for watching. Bye.